Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for March 7th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and our citizens of New Carlisle. Ms. Berger, if you would call the roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Robold. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. <laughs> Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. We pray that you please be in this meeting, that you would guide the citizens and guide the council. Please protect our first responders and all of our troops and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, moving on, we'll need uh, to accept the minutes for the regular meeting on uh, February 22nd, 2022. So moved. Second. Uh, First, Mr. Grimm? Yep, second by Mr. Cook. Right. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted, 6-0. All right, thank you very much. And then moving on to communications, Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. So we have a few things for communications tonight. One, we have some information on our CHIP 2022 program uh, that we're partnering with Clark County on. Uh, Derek Hutchison, our planning director, is going to take that lead. And we also have two BZA cases for council tonight. So everyone's been waiting. Uh, the CHIP 22 is here. So uh, we're accepting applications starting today. Uh, we're going to accept them in, until April 15th. Uh, I'm just going to break down a little bit of the, uh, of the programs that we have here. Uh, so this is partnered with Clark County uh, Economic Development Department. Uh, we uh, partnered with them to be able to just be able to get more funds by partnering together. Uh, so how you uh, become eligible for this, uh, have to have an income below 80% of median income. And what that looks like is uh, one person uh, can earn up to $37,150, two person $42,450, and it goes all the way up to eight person at $70,050 to be able to qualify. Um, so most of the programs, you do have to be a homeowner in Clark County or in the city of New Carlisle. This is everywhere in Clark County, excluding Springfield. And the reason you see that, that we're not just leaving them out, they get their own entitlement funds, so they're left out of, out of this particular, um, particular one. Um, so the, one of the programs we have is uh, homeowner repair. So what this is, is it, the homeowner could receive up to $15,000 in funds. Uh, this is for, uh, this will be a project for like a roof repair, replacement, maybe HVC, a furnace went out, um, that type, it's, it's more specific, more urgent, uh, a need. Then there's the homeowner rebilitation. So this is a homeowner uh, owned property, uh, and this could be up to $55,000. So this could be include insulation, windows, roof, HVAC, electrical. Uh, there's, there's a number of things that, that this could include. And then there's a uh, first time home buyer's assistance. So what that is, is it's up to uh, $60,000. Uh, and what that is, uh, I'm sorry, 55, 55,000, uh, and that is to assist for down payment assistance for uh, first time home buyers here in uh, Clark County or New Carlisle. Uh, that will, not only does that include the down payment, but if the house need rehab or need repairs to be brought to code, some of those funds could be used for that as well. Uh, then we also uh, have uh, teamed up with Habitat for Humanity and the goal is two builds in Clark County, and hopefully we get one of those uh, possibly here in New Carlisle. Uh, so you can, um, we do have residents that can apply for that as well, and uh, if they're chose for that, it's, you'll go through the whole planning process of building this house 
um, to be able to take over when it's done. Um, you could turn your application, you could get applications from myself, you come into the office, I can get you a packet. Uh, you can pick them up also in Clark County, uh, and you can return them to me. If you're here in New Carlisle, we'll just bring them on to the office to me, and I can get them to Clark County. Uh, if you're outside of Clark County, if you're closer to me, bring them to me. If not, then you can take them to Clark County, uh, and that's at their Springview building. They're on East Main Street. Um, I've done these programs in the past with other municipalities I with, and they are they're great. I mean, they are excellent uh, uh, source of uh, uh, aid and assistance. Um, the home repair is first come first serve. The home rehab and the other programs are uh, they'll be evaluated per need uh, and, and be evaluated that way before we're uh, taken. But. Um, Excited to have this program for New Carlisle. Um, we also, Clark County uh, has part of their ARPA funds uh, created their own grant. Uh, they have $100,000 to break up uh, to do small uh, emergency rehabs. These are 75,000 maximum, or I'm sorry, $7,500 uh, maximum, except for a roof project that could go up to 10. Those you can apply directly through Clark County, and those are Clark County funds. These aren't the HUD funds from CHIP. Uh, but if, you know, if by chance you don't qualify for CHIP, you may qualify for this or vice versa. So we've got uh, very grateful for Clark County reaching out and, and including us in those and, and, and helping us plan. Uh, so we've got some assistance out there. If you know anybody or yourself know anybody, and that's in Clark County um, or the city of New Carlisle, excluding Springfield. So. Anybody has any questions on that? Dirk uh, from uh, Clark County was supposed to be here tonight. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it. Um, but if anybody has any questions about how those programs work or anything, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Hutchinson, you, this is for existing homes, right? Yes. Yeah, so right. this, for, so the rehab and the repair is for existing homes, and you have to be uh, there. You know, there's. The, the applications are pretty thick. I mean, there's, they're pretty uh, intense. They, yep. they requires a lot of background check. Um, but the houses themselves, you have to be homeowner, home, homeowner occupied. Taxes have to be up, uh, up paid, up to do. Um, but yeah, this for existing houses. Right. Yeah, and, there, and there's not really an age limit of the house. It's just it it's yeah, more has to be a, an existing structure. Can't be a new build. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Council. Any other questions or comments? Excuse me. All right. Okay. And uh, moving on to other communications, the first BZA case, I'll let you take over from here first since sure. your, your case is. Uh, first case, uh, I think you guys got the packet. It, did you get the packet? Mark, I sent you. Okay. So uh, this is for uh, 200 East Lake. Uh, this is Safe and Sound out Outfitters, uh, Central Business uh, Zoning. And this is a request of variance to permit three additional wall signs for a total of four wall signs total. A variance to permit the combined wall signs areas of 216 square feet. So currently right now, the, the allows one wall sign not to exceed 100 square feet. So, uh, so there's two variances there. That'd be a total of four wall signs compared to one and a total square footage of 216 square feet compared to 100. Uh, and the applicant is here tonight if you have any questions for him on that. Council, any questions? Mr. Uh, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, I, I looked at the uh, pictures for this place. They have stained glass windows there now because the building structure used to be a church. Uh, I have no problem with uh, them covering those up for whatever type of advertisement they're wanting to put on there. I can only assume they're uh, like vinyl, something that will peel off. Or yeah, and they already are installed. They're, they were installed prior to authorization. They're, okay. they're vinyl on, uh, mounted on metal, metal uh, flat metal plate that's over the so window. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, that's the thing. I have no problem with it. Yeah, I don't see any issues with it. Any council. Mr. Hensley, do you have anything you want to say or add? I'm good. All right. All right. So. Do we need a motion on that? I'm sorry. Do we need? A yeah, you'll need to that? you'll need to approve or deny the, the variance. I got one, yes. one thing, um, Mr. I'm sure you guys do. Do you guys have outdoor cameras so you can see who's coming in and out? Um, okay, just wanted to make sure you know. Well, thank you, Mr. Roadwell. So we'll just need a motion to approve. If so moved. Second. Uh, we'll
we'll go with, I guess, Mr. Lindsay first, and, I don't, I don't know. and then Mr. Mr. Bond was second. Second. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear anybody. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman <clears throat> Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Sorry. Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Bond? Yes. Best six year? And the second case we have tonight, um, and I'm sorry, I've never met him in person, is Mason here tonight, by chance? Great, okay. Uh, so this is a variance request for a, an accessory structure rear setback. Uh, this is at 108 North Scott Street. Uh, this property is a single family residential uh, property. It backs up to the alley that's in between Adams and Scott Street. Uh, basically, what, what they're wanting to do is build a, a detached garage that's back there. Uh, there is a foundation where the old one was, was actually, it's, it's almost where exactly where, where the proposed one's going. Um, this is one of those cases where the neighborhood existed prior to the zoning code. So the zoning code, um, majority of the houses in this area are legal non-conforming, which means they, they're legal because they were there prior to that, uh, but they are uh, in a non-conforming status. Um, his neighboring properties do have similar structures that exist to where he's located, so it, it's nothing that's really going to look out of place. Um, he's got, uh, I can tell you, one of the best app applications I ever received, very detailed, so <laughs> kudos to you, Mason. That was, it's really good. Um, so the variance is for a three and a half foot rear setback. Um, so that back there is, is 10 feet is the, is the maximum distance. Now, um, Normally, uh, normally there's not an alley back there, but this is going to be set in far enough back uh, that it's not going to create any visual distances back there. And then the height is uh, for a variance for a 22 maximum height. Uh, our regulations is 18 or not to exceed the principal building. The house itself is a very large house. It's uh, 30 feet in sight, so it's not going to exceed the height of the house, but it will exceed the 18 feet um, permitted by four feet. And if you have any questions, Mason's here tonight too, if, if you have any questions about the, the project. Sir? So this is just for replacing an old garage? So there was one at one time. The foundation's still there. Uh, so it, it's going to be, once, once it's gone, it's, it's gone. So uh, today's code is a legal non-conforming status. Once it's gone, it then has to conform to today's code. So even though there was an, an accessory structure there, it, you still have to get a variance to be able to put it right back. And the structure that was there before didn't cause any problem? No. Okay. Neighboring properties have, have existing ones there as well, so okay. it kind of goes in place with, with the rest of the street. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Cox, uh, just curious, are you going to be replacing the cement from the pictures? It looks like it's all broken up a little bit. Yeah, so it's, it's going to come out. We're building it as a post-frame building, and then we're going to pour it the floor inside. Okay. All right. Thank you. Council, any other questions, comments? Nope. Mr. Mayor, sir, move to accept the uh, the variance. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second by Mr. Rodwell. All right. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodon? Yes. Accepted 6 0. Thank you very much. All right. All right, moving on to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the public, members of council. I get my page going here. I've been uh, <clears throat> burned it connected to the internet. All right, so we have under informational items, uh, the next month, of course, we'll have our full department reports. I mean, at next meeting. Uh, intro of the Elizabeth Township Fire, me Fire and EMS contract we will be done at the March 14th meeting that you guys will have to appoint. Uh, so we have intro that, it could sit for seven days and we can take action on that on the 21st. Um, it's still in legal review, so if any council member would like some detail on that, just give me a call, we can discuss that on the phone. 
the Miami County annexation right now, we had a meeting with Bethel Township late last week. They are full go. Um, they are taking some things back to their township trustees to discuss whether they prefer that to be in the uh, township or excluded from the township. Right now, we are writing the annexation agreement for them to be detached from the township. Um, that way, the allocation of property to taxes favors New Carlisle. So uh, unless that changes, we'll, we'll definitely update you, but we do want, we want as uh, much property tax revenue as we can. Uh, charter review, at the last meeting I had asked, uh, I was asked by charter review to ask you guys to decide whether they should edit and continue with the current model or use the new approved charter that is recommended. Um, so they would like a motion for you guys to make for that. All right, council. So basically, it's old versus new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to do what? So I'll move to go to the new charter. New. That was Mr. Cook. Is there a second for second. that? Second. Second by Mr. Lindsay. Councilman Rodold. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I have a question. Okay. Yes. I'm assuming they will be updating it to our needs, not yeah. just standard the way it is. Yeah, yeah, they'll tweak it as they, they see fit, um, you know, or how they feel should be presented okay. to us and then pass it on to the citizens. Um, okay, that's good, thank you. Is it? Mr. Mayor. Sure. One comment real quick, because I did um, go to that meeting last week um, with the, um, sure. the, the charter review folks. and. So they're, they're planning to use that as kind of a template to answer your question, um, but make it more specific for us and usable for us. So. And kind of blend the two together. Yeah, yeah. And because there is a lot of things in there that don't really pertain to us, um, and a lot of things that need to be in there that do pertain to us, but they're just kind of using it, the overall template and, and the format um, is what they're looking at. And, did they, they were doing a very good job. If you don't mind me asking, I mean, because I was at the same meeting you were, but I had to leave a little early. Would it be easier for them to work, continue with ours? Because that's what they originally did. They started with ours, and then they found this new model. And either way, they're going to have to kind of start over. So, I mean, I figured it would be easier to just continue with ours and just rework it as they go. But did they say which one they preferred? They did not. Actually, they I just think it could save some them. direction. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just think it could save them time continuing on one that's already geared towards our city. Mr. Hall, yeah. and so is he here? We just walked in. No, that was no, no, Mr. Yeah. Hall. Yeah. That was Mr. Moody. Um, yeah, so I guess it, it's kind of a blended thing, really, yeah. is, is what it ends up being. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, so this motion is to accept the new model. For them to continue working on. Councilman Rodwell? No. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. Councilman Bond? No. Councilman Cook? Yes. Hmm. Councilman Lindsay? Since I second it, I guess I'll vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I don't, well, go ahead. I, I don't want to chime in before you well, that, vote. That's fine, that's fine. Yes. Um, that motion fails two to four. I don't want to ever set my boundary. You may I make a suggestion so that maybe to give them better clear, because I think at the end of the day it's going to be a hybrid. Would it be out of my place to ask one of the council members to make a motion to make it a hybrid model? Because that way they'll take elements of both. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think that's a wise thing. I mean, they may to do help them with some direction. They may do that on their own. Yeah, they know. probably. Yeah, yeah. Motion, we can make a motion needed. just to help yeah. that along. And the only reason, you know, that I was, I voted no on it was just I think it'll be easier for them to move forward with something that's already got a base to it. Good. I'm not against Good what point. the new one look like. I just think it'll save them time and they'll be able to be a little bit more efficient on getting it done. Sure. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So there we go. Thank you. And moving on to see manage report under fireworks. All right. The contract is in legal review. Um, we did. Uh, it is June 25th for the main event, and then June 26th would be the rainout date. 
Uh, we did negotiate a price of seventeen thousand, so we have three, about three thousand left over at the parks and red take parks and board red take over it. So have a little wiggle room for any additional stuff they want. But for seventeen thousand, I think we're going to get a really good, really good show. Um, Mayor's Court, we are finishing that up. So one of the things that we have decided to do before we open up is make the restrooms ADA compliant. So we have a quote in for right now. Hopefully that gets started with the next week or two. But we need to take the two bathrooms in the back of that building and widen them out to 36 inches. That was a recommendation. So I don't want to have that court start and then someone come in with a wheelchair and then that be an issue. Other than that, everything's good to go. That was kind of like the thing that kind of snuck up on us with the ADA compliance. Other than that, I think we'd be probably rock and rolling here in the next week or two. Um, but we do have a vested interest in getting that building definitely uh, cleaned out for that purpose. Um, additional council boards, I'm still working on that packet that I have for you guys that is, that's long. Um, I haven't got done going through it yet. Once I get that done, hopefully I get that done this week, it's on my to-do list to get done. I'll email it out and we'll re revisit the council boards at the 21st meeting. Uh, <laughs> TCC appointment, Mr. Cook, I know we talked about this, but they're kind of on me. I do need to go ahead and get that, that alternative person selected. So I don't know um, if any council wants to uh, volunteer for that, you would go in Mr. Cook's um, absence. Um, you, want to, it's a, you want to explain a little bit about what the board does? Basically, we are a group that meets once a month with all of the TCC uh, people. And I, I think Mr. Lindsay's been over there a number of times in his past. I think that uh, with representatives that represent all of the primarily districts in Clark County, uh, we're coming up with a lot of good ideas and a lot of new projects. For example, Snyder Road, I think the mayor has alluded to, mm -hmm. is due to be on the uh, agenda for the 2025 operation for a rework of that road that will greatly enhance, I think, the access to Wright-Patterson. Spangler. Spangler Road. Or Spangler, I'm sorry. Hopefully they do something with the flooding out there, too. I mean, it's well, closed right now. When do they meet? When do they meet? <clears throat> we usually meet on Friday mornings about 10.30 over at uh, the uh, east end building. building over there. And it's usually anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half long. There has been a change in leadership, and I believe they're still looking for the person to uh, kind of head up the Clark County organization. I can do that. Right. So I want to make a motion for Mr. Graham. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to appoint Mr. Vice Mayor Graham to the TTC alternative member position. I'll second. You got that? Yeah, I already put you down. Oh, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I would have declined that. I didn't know. I thought you would. It was seconded by Mr. Roadwall. Any other discussion? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Graham. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Absolutely. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Seven six zero. Thank you very much. I'm back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And upcoming legislation motions uh, for council, we have still the employee general of the code section update I'm still working on, and the Aldeburgh Comp R Roth, uh, Roth IRA option for our employees. I need to finalize through our finance department. Other than that, I'll have some more information for you at the March 21st meeting. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. You're welcome. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Bridge on his report this evening? All right, and Mr. moving. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I would move that we uh, break rules of council to move the uh, public comments from position number eight to other business, position number 12. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Roadwall. Ready to call it? 
Any questions or comments? You're ready. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. No. Councilman Cook. No. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. And Councilman Rodwell. Yes. Three to three tie. Thank you. It don't happen. What's that? So it don't happen. It doesn't happen. So, all right. We will move on to comments from members of the public. Um, as before, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address uh, for the public record, and then we will be, per our rules of council, your comments need to be kept to five minutes. I'm going to try and keep to that five minutes tonight because we'll be here for hours. So. Whoever wants to go first. I'm being threatened. Says we know you. Randy Mullet, 522 Hamilton Avenue. Although perhaps I should be saying April Lowry because I'm doing a little bit of her bidding tonight. She couldn't be here. Um, I happened to notice a post on Facebook uh, just within the last couple of days. Somebody who is not a resident of the city of New Carlisle was very unhappy that the cardboard dumpster by the pool was full. Um, it's my understanding that cardboard dumpster is basically just a nuisance. Um, it's full all the time. It's kind of, it's not at all unlike the, um, the donation drop box that's in the IGA parking lot. So when it's full, people just leave their trash there on the outside. People are not just putting cardboard into that dumpster. They're putting all kinds of garbage. Um, April's suggestion was either to completely do away with it or put it somewhere that it can be more closely monitored um, for that excessive dumping and use. And I know, you know, it's it's not a bad thing, and you know, we're we're not against recycling. Um, we're just trying to prevent it from becoming another issue that's blighted in the city. And I know April had said that the pool can't even use it for their own cardboard recycling through the summer because it's always full. So just an idea. That's all I got. Mm. Mr. Lindsay does have to throw everything at me. No, I'm going to. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, question for Mr. Bridge. Sir. Mr. Bridge, mm. any chance of keeping a better eye on that and keeping it empty? Figure out something we'll let you know. We're going to do about it. Is it, uh, I know it gets used a lot. It does. And, and I have been there a few times myself and it's been full, but I just throw it in on top and close the lid down, you know. I think yeah. it's, it's a double edged sword. It's basically for our residents, but other people come to use it. Um, do we have batter, a, It's still going to fill up. Do we have a camera up there now or not? Uh, it's uh, one, far away. It's far away. I know. One, so the best we can do is just move it to another location or get rid of it. That's really the two options. So I'll give it to Howie um, and figure out what we're going to do. Because mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a nuisance no matter where it's at. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate, whether it be at the fire station or somewhere else. You don't want it there. Move it over here. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out something because it is. It's a double edged oh. sword. Maybe we find ways we can lock it up um, and open it for Monday through Friday, but then people are just going to place stuff on the outside of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the root of the cause <coughs> is unfortunately the waste management contract that doesn't, that states that. The driver doesn't get out of the vehicle to pick up large boxes, especially now. Now with with the abundance of ordering online, and you can order something as small as this iPad, and you get a box that you can you can fit in your freezer. Um, and no matter how small you try to break it, it's not everything fits in those boxes. So um, I know the contract's not due up for another two years, um, but it's definitely something I think we need to look at the next sure. waste management negotiation is large recycle whether they they have an ideal um you know or you know i know they say you can call ahead but i mean you can ask derek how many times people call ahead to waste management and it just sits there for weeks on end um and that gives the city a bigger eyesore than the pool mm -hmm. recycle bin overflow sure so i just forgot one point that april wanted to make um right now <clears throat> when it does get overfilled Howie is sending one of his city guys out to clean it up when yeah. it's overflowed and out on the ground. So then we don't have a problem. 
Sure. I just have a question for Mr. Bridge. Uh, is that a, a one time a month that they pick that up, or what is the it's, frequency? It's every two weeks for recycling. Oh, no, they, re they recycle that every week. Oh, oh it is every, every week? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that one's every Wednesday. Okay. So, wait, wait, okay. that once a week. I do apologize. Okay. It's, different. it's a different truck that yeah. would yeah. do that dumpster. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else, Council? All right. <clears throat> Moving on. <clears throat> Good evening. Mr. Mills. Morning, members of council, manager Bridge, other members of a uh, city organization. Randy, I wore this hat for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Don't forget your address. My address is 285 Zeller Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio, 45344. Full disclosure, I do not live in city limits. However, the actions of this body will directly affect me and my family, and that is why I'm here. First and foremost, I will say, and it may be unpopular to some here, I am for expansion and development of this city. However, there's a caveat to that, and it directly relates to um, so-called RD2 and RD3 developments that may or may not happen within this city limits. First and foremost, I will be the first one to tell you I moved out of this community four years ago because there was nothing within the city limits that met my needs for how I want to raise my family. There was no home large enough. There was no plot big enough for me to move on. So I moved out of the district moved out of the city limits and found something that met my income level and met my needs and wants. That all changed in July of 2021 when the Tecumseh Local School District sent me a letter that said my son's open enrollment was rejected because of census. So my wife and I, we made the hard decision. We're going to sell our home. We're going to move back into the district for our kids, for our family. They're established here. They have friends here. The Tecumseh Local School District is one of the best districts as far as I'm concerned. I've got some grievances with them, but they're minuscule in the whole scheme of things. So there's a long process, but we're back here. We may not live in the city, live just south of the cemetery, still drive through the city every single day to drop off my kids to daycare, so we're here. With that, again, for development, my problem is if you do the simple math and you look at RD2 and RD3, and this is just me doing the math, you could add up to 575 homes, not just in New Carlisle, but to the Tecumseh Local School District. Simple math. This is an educated guess. Could be more, could be less, I don't know. A thousand children could be added to the K through 12 district in the Tecumseh Local Schools. Currently, the census is just under 300,000, so you're adding 33% to the district. Great, fantastic. Somebody's gotta pay for it. How does the school get its money? Property. Look on Clark County and Bethel Township, which New Carlisle is a part of, for every thousand dollars evaluation of your home, seventy-seven dollars goes to the county. Of that, forty-four, almost forty-five dollars, goes to the school district. It's a lot of money. I want to expand, I want to see it happen. But the developer of those districts, whether they're one, two, three, I don't know, they have a lot of money to be made off of developing those homes. I'm not going to say that somebody who has a business shouldn't make money. I'm all for it. However, a community should not be negatively impacted by an individual or a company's desire to turn a profit. That being said, the developer 
if this many homes is made, and again, this is an educated guess, 575 homes, an RD2, an RD3, could make said developer between seven and $14 million. That doesn't take into account the upfront cost, cost for infrastructure, so on and so forth. levies. But just be honest. How many years did it take to pass the operating levy? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm no, you're fine. I'm just curious. I'm gonna, I, I'll, get, I'll cut to it. At the end of the day, this bond has to do with an extension of said community, of said developments. This body has an obligation to ensure that the developer pays its fair share to ensure that the taxpayers are fully compensated for said developments, in addition to that the quality of education for the students, current, present, and future, are taken care of. And that should be taken into account in the negotiations and the ongoing conversations that this body has with annexation of said properties. That being said, if that does not occur, this community has the option to petition locality to ensure that rezoning does not occur, whether that be at the county or city level. So I ask that this council ensure that that occurs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. All right, next, yep, please. Thank you. Um, good evening, uh, my name is Tanya Wells. I live at 5330 Eastland Drive. Um, that is New Carlisle. It is Bethel Township, Miami County. Um, I'm speaking to pretty much voice the same concerns as gentleman had here too. Um, it was interesting that you had said you had the meeting with them, uh, Miami County, and or was it the township, I'm not sure, the board or whomever, that they're on board, yet we just saw, I just saw that they're not happy with this. And it sounds like what you're saying is they have potentially that it might be annexed to Clark County. Is that correct? That'll be for us to decide who. Where okay, but that is an option. Is that? Yeah, it'll it'll come down to city council. Okay, okay, that's that's. I'm sorry. Okay, because honestly, I can stand up here and I can do just what happened last time, which was everybody wants to implore with you the emotional all the impact of what's happening to the wildlife, to our farmlands going away, but that's not gonna get you anywhere. What is gonna get you where is exactly what he's talking about. It is the schools. And the Bethel does have an opportunity. They can say no, you can say no, and Miami County can say no. So then you're left with who's gonna take these kids? Can Tecumseh take these kids? Who's gonna pay for that? And that is a huge thing. And the reason I'm standing here is because Bethel made the decision that they did. And they can't take care of the kids they have. And you're going to be in the same situation. And so are we if we end up taking them. The other thing that needs to be thought of for that land there on Scarf okay, and Lake is the houses themselves. He is right. That development is there for the money. Yes, you think you can get the money for the, what's going to be there. And yes, you think that you're going to be able to have all the houses and all the infrastructure and everything come in. But didn't you guys have some issues with selling houses in Twin Creek? Yep. With selling some of the development? I know there was issues with not with the land. I understand that. And I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is actually people buying the houses because they want to be here, because they want to live on a lot that's less than an acre land. My question is, do you want to have a development that may not be complete, that may not have, you have started houses, but it's not done? You're right, your developer can pay the taxes, but what, what are you left with? Then here's the biggest thing, and it's something that I found interesting when I listened to the meeting last time. A lot of us talked about the drainage, and after last night's rain and today's rain, we can all see what happens. 
Okay, it's bad, no matter where you go. You can go New Carlisle, east of town, some of those houses built within the last 10 years, there are, there's ponding. There's, there's ponding in the yards, there's ponding across the road. Where I live on Eastland, okay, uh, my house is, I always have water. Th my understanding is that with this development, well, that could take care of that. And from what I can see, what I've seen is that a pond might be the way to fix this. I live around four ponds. It's not fixing anything. And developers, if you know, when you have every 1,000 square foot roof shed 600 gallons of water in one inch of rain, where's that water gonna go? Because I can tell you, it's gonna come towards me. It's gonna come towards the lake. It's gonna, it's gonna overflow the ponds that are already there. The biggest thing that, you know, I think about the houses and the $250,000, that was good a couple years ago. $250,000 is not going to get you what it, today. It's not. I mean, that's something to think about when you're trying to put a development into progress. Progress is great, but who are you progressing for? Who are you benefiting? Because the elevation where I am, while I understand that you can say that that's a Miami County issue, because I do fall in Miami County, it's already an issue now. What is it going to be by the time you guys do what you do? And then the, when I also looked at the meeting from last time, there was talk about how is this going to, who's going to police it? It was not a direct new Carlisle. It was, well, we'll have to work with Miami County. Who's going to pay for it? Is that going to be me because I live in Miami County and I suddenly have people that are speeding who always do and a lot more of them for something that I don't even necessarily want? And then you look at the environmental aspect of it. I've called the EPA today. I've tried to determine where they are and everything and how, who's, who, I, my question is, are you guys going to have somebody check it out too or just defend on the development? Because if it's anything else, like, you go into a courtroom, everybody has their own expert witness. I'm pretty sure this developer probably does too. Mm -hmm. Lastly, well, my well, last thing, we're past five minutes. Okay, well, this is my last thing because according to the um, ORC 709.033, section A5, I'm not going to read it all because it's a bunch of jargon. Basically, what it says is the benefits to the territory proposed to be annexed and the surrounding area will outweigh the detriments to the territory proposed to be annexed and the surrounding area. The surrounding area is anything that's 0.5 miles from that area. I'm 0.5 miles, and some of these people here are even closer. And I can tell you, this is not a benefit. It's a detriment. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. Next. Hello. Hi. My name is Virginia Keeper. I live at 5833 Scarf Road, New Carlisle, um, outside the city limits in Miami County. How are you tonight? Good, thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm just getting wind of all of the, the development. Uh, I have this map here for, I think it's called, referred to as RD1, the 293 homes at the corner of Scarf and Lake Avenue. So I would like to go on the record and say that I think it's a terrible idea to have a development that dense come to that corner. I Like the other gentleman back there said, I'm not against development, I understand, but I think that this is so dense and really insane. I mean, the, the impact on our community will be huge. Um, but in addition to that, I would also like to ask the city, because I have lived in this area now for 17 years, and um, as of, uh, for a year and a, and a quarter now, I've worked at Sacred Heart Church in New Carlisle. And I've gotten to know the community a lot better. And um, one of the things that concerns me is that with the influx of either this development, RD1, 2, and 3, that is a potential growth in the city that you have not experienced in a long time. So is the city prepared to uh, allow development for new grocery shopping, new restaurants? Um, I have been dying to ask about why there's no alcohol sales at restaurants in the city of New Carlisle, when right outside the city limits, the 571 Grill does a booming, beautiful business, and I don't think it affects the community in a very negative way. So 
Um, otherwise, without that kind of thought process going on here in the city, um, you can see and welcome all this tax money come in in property taxes with all of these homes and people coming in. Um, you'll have to have all of the um, infrastructure issues addressed, et cetera, et cetera. Other people are taking care of those comments tonight. But um, I'd like to see the city of New Carlisle grow then. Instead of all these people run to Huber Heights, to El Toro, and to, New, and to Tip City. How many times I've been to Tip City and said, gee, I wish New Carlisle could have a little more flavor like this. So I'm for New Carlisle. I really am. 17 years I've been here. I really am for this town. It's just, there's just not, I mean, to embrace all of this development and then keep everything status quo in the city is just going to be nuts because people won't stay here. So I just, I don't know if we can have a conversation about that or you can address that at another time, but those are my comments tonight. Right. And thank you for my five minutes. Thank you very much. Lack of knowledge. Right. Gentlemen, Miss um, Connor Baderka, <clears throat> 1110 Langdale. Um, Couple questions, um, Mr. Bridge. Uh, is there any direct them to council? Okay, please, uh, council. Is there any um, alignment with like? Do we have specifics on developers for um, the developments yet? Is that is the, as far as has the developer been picked? <coughs> yeah, not, not that I'm aware of. Not yeah. any of them. I know I saw something on Facebook this week that said that there may have been one picked for the one East uh, East New Carlisle Road. I just wanted to confirm one way or another. The one in Miami County has a developer, does not have a home builder. Okay. The second one has both a developer and a home builder. Okay. The third one has a developer and a home builder too, just a developer. Well, that's the same. So, so the same. Yep. So the third one does not have a home builder yet. Okay. Is that information that will be released to anybody? As soon as we get it, pass okay. it along. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in regards to the chip program. So I'm a local business owner. I own a, a construction company that's uh, specific for roofing. Is there a way to become <clears throat> a preferred contractor for um, something of the likes of that? Uh, I was talking to Josh uh, Mooney, who works for me. Um, similar to the situation that happened in Dayton with all the tornadoes, they had kind of a, a government assistance program that um, came in and allotted quite a bit of money that had some contractors <coughs> run away with um, for projects. So. If there's a way that we can get um, set up to be a preferred contractor for that, <clears throat> I'd love to help New Carlisle um, in that sense. Yeah, so if, if you want to take one of the flyers there, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have one yet, mm -hmm. on the back uh, is contact for Dirk. He's okay. the grants manager, okay. so they will. We, we do go out, uh, there's, there's qualifications that the contractors have to meet, mm -hmm. um, but Let's just say, by chance, you don't have a certification of something they're looking for. It's something that you could get. And let's say you don't make it on this cut, you will be eligible for the upcoming one. So definitely, we're all looking for contractors. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so Dirk's going to be your best contact, uh, and he'll be able to get you, you know, everything that you need to, to be able to apply for that. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next. Excuse me. How you doing? Ryan Lostetter, 7950 East New Carlisle Road. Uh, I live outside of the city. I'm uh, Bethel Schools, Miami Township. Um, playing a little bit of catch up on, on all this. I know there was a meeting that I uh, was out of town for that I, uh, that I missed, so I'm sure a lot of this stuff was already covered. Can the council explain where, with the development, where are all these kids going to go to school? Is that going to be Bethel or is that going to be Tecumseh? As far as I'm, as far as right now, I mean that hasn't. It's not. It's not to that point yet. I mean, well, it depends on depends on what what development. I mean, RD one, two, or three. The one. One on scarf. Yeah. Um, they go to Bethel. I do not believe they can cross county lines. They would go to Bethel. So they would go to either Bethel or Tip City, or Miami East. No, they would. It was. They would go to Bethel. They would go. To they Bethel. would definitely go to Bethel. Yeah. Which gets. We will also get a 075 percent income tax for each one of those parcels. So Bethel schools not only get millage from property tax, they also have a 0.75% income tax in place as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So in regards to that development and, and, and the rest, and I don't want to continue to repeat what 
other people have said, but I understand progress. I'm all about it. But when you guys are sitting here and, and, and approving these things, think more about just the dollar bill. We've got, I've got a niece, I've got two nieces that go to Bethel. One of them spends the majority of her day learning in a trailer in the parking lot behind the school. I just registered my five-year-old daughter to go to kindergarten at Bethel starting next year. Mm -hmm. By the time she's there and all this happens, she's going to end up spending the majority of her K through 12 in an overcrowded school, and I pray that that doesn't happen. And if they end up going to Tecumseh, I pray for those kids too that it doesn't happen. There's progress to be made, but you don't have to add 300 homes to do it. You don't have to add 500 heads to the school, 1,000 heads to the school. I mean, put, put yourself in the position of these kids. We're the adults. We're the ones that are supposed to be looking out for them and thinking about their future, making sure they get the education that they need. Are we doing that if they're, if they're walking across the parking lot in the middle of winter to go to a trailer? Hey, put your coat on, walk across the parking lot, you'll be out in that trailer for the next four hours learning. So think about it. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Good evening. Uh, Tom Keeper, also 5833 Scarf Road. Um, I just want to add on to some of the things that have been said. Regard, uh, regarding the schools and other items, we, we in Bethel, in Miami County, have been dealing with this at the south end of our township with Huber Heights uh, expanding out into our, into our township and adding that load to our schools. And it is not, yes, there's some money, but it is not uh, enough to pay for the, the kids that are added to the school. Bethel Township, or Bethel Schools, are uh, severely burdened by that expansion, and we're trying to keep it from happening down there. And so we're gonna fight hard to keep it from happening up here, too. Um, one thing that's not been mentioned yet is, is traffic. And you have New Carlisle Road, you have Scarf Road, with small, small roads with 293 homes, you're probably easily talking about two cars per home, 586 cars, you know, almost 600 cars added to all these, to these really just three, at that one intersection, four directions to go. Scarf Road is, is bad enough as it is now with cars that come speeding up and down that, that road. And the prospect of another almost 600 cars added to that load, and just the way this is laid out, it gives no consideration to that, and it does not look to be, a, frankly, to me, an, a well thought out plan because it's it's so dense, it's so dense, and and this is supposed to be in a rural community, and it's it's just way overdone. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Jeff Morford, 65701 Walnut, Thousand Township. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, a couple, couple things. Uh, do you know how many houses are in New Carlisle? How many? You said how many houses? Yeah. Around 2,200, give or Perfect. take. Post off to my information. I don't want to throw out these numbers and you might think I'm building out a proportion or something, you know. Do you know how many houses are vacant in in this community? I'm not like no, not recently. I don't know. I'm going to give you a number. This is from last summer. 214 vacant houses in New Carolina. No, no way, no, no way, no, no. Nope. Okay. I actually not have even not close. Next uh, for the next report. We okay, that's what I'm saying. We need to qualify the numbers. Sure, it averages around 40 to 50 a month. We we run a report every month on our water account, so we we know exactly to the pinpoint how many big houses we have and it's and you're saying it's 50 it's around it hovers around 50 yeah okay i'll if i find different information than this i'll go to different websites and come up with my suggestion to you is 
when you search, and I'm not trying to dig you on this to give you advice, because um, I run into it too when I do my research, is there's a separation between New Carlisle zip code and New Carlisle city limits. Mm -hmm. So when you just search New Carlisle, you're searching the entire zip code, which spans multiple counties. So okay. if you do that, we're only specific to New Carlisle city limits specific. Okay, we'll go a different direction then. Sure. If there's 2,500 houses, I'm just using averages in the house, the expansions that you're looking at is maybe 900 houses over the next three positions, the next eight year, is that true? Eight to 10 years. Yeah, yeah, could be. That's a 37% increase in housing. Over 10 years, maybe that's three or 4%. I've looked up other communities, they're not quite growing at that percentage. And are you prepared for that kind of increase? Okay, that was one thing. Uh, Number two, if I may. Again, I'm, I'm sort of connected with the lake, Silver Lake, 4720 Scarf Road. Last week, it sort of gave me like I should be uh, comfortable with the margin between where the housing plots are and where the lake is. Like there's this margin there that's going to be plenty of room for safety reasons or whatever. But when you look at the, the, the plot of the land, forget my fence line, forget everybody's fence line, forget county's fence line, forget city's fence lines, forget all that. If you just look at the land itself, between the developed land and our land, it, right where they stop the housing, it's a, it's a valley, it goes down, it goes, there's hillsides all along back of my property, and it all goes down to the wetlands then and progresses probably a mile down, if not, don't know exactly. So these houses are strictly going to be right on the edge of the hillside and worried about the runoff, worried about the ecological side of it kind of thing. We've contacted uh, a BW Greenway out of S Springfield. We're in contact with him trying to figure out what's a margin. You know, you're, you're telling me that you know, from my fence line to your fence line typically is 403 feet and 545 at the top of there. Not much footage to my fence line, but really where the hill starts out, it's going to be 20 yards away kind of thing. Where's all that water going to go? So we're looking at, has there been an environmental assessment done? Has there been an environmental impact study done yes. by this town? Can we have it? Uh, the developer did it. They got the green light to go. Can we day. have it? Uh, because again, when the EPA has not said that they have, they've submitted a phase one environmental. It got passed. It did not trigger a phase two environmental. So when you do these phase ones, it's, it's all the same criteria. It's not one person can make it easier to pass than the other. But they have. We met with them last week. They have done their phase one environmental. There is nothing from an environmental standpoint that they can that they, that calls concern. Is that accessible to us? You got a copy of that I can have? You can reach out to a developer and get it. Okay, from the developer. That, that's good. According to the EPA. I'm sure. I'm sure. It is. They did not have that information at the time, but when I called them today, but they did say when they go through that, it is public information. And they've already done it, so I'd call the developer and okay, I'm sure they can have access to that. Sure. sure. Who sure. is the developer? Okay, Hold on. let's get time back to you because your five minutes has passed. So if you got anything else. Anybody want to give up their five minutes? You can have mine. No, there you no, go. no. You can't. That's not allowed? Okay. I'll I'll apologize. I'll you. Do you want me to read? No, I'm good. I'm good. I covered most of the subjects. You know, I'll, I'll clarify. I'm sorry if I was off on the housing numbers. I'll clarify, get more numbers if possible. But I think, again, just two comments. One thing, please sustain what we have. We've got a nice community. Sometimes the, the, the price, you know, how valuable is our property, how valuable is our history, what we've got to offer people. You know, sometimes you can't put a price on that. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to get a million dollars or something like that, and it's worth giving up different things. And I've, I've looked into the, uh, the environmental impacts. I've looked into the animals we have there, and they're on the endangered species list, and I'll push that subject. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, anyone else? What's going on, Mr. Lowry? Mr. Coburn, how are you, sir? Good. How's everybody at home? 
Uh, Name and address. James Coburn, 8110 East New Carlisle Road, New Carlisle. I'm in Miami County. <coughs> so will rezoning for RD1, 2, and 3 occur before annexation or after? Say it again. I couldn't hear you. Will rezoning for RD1, 2, and 3 happen before or after the development? Well, you can't answer that question just because you don't know what type they're doing yet. So really that's determining what type of annexation they plan. The petitioner plans to file. <clears throat> They'll be type one, type two, type three, expedited, non-expedited. So really, as we stated very early in the process, we don't, we don't know the answer to that. All right, just thought I'd check with you now. Mm -hmm. And then who did you say the developer was? For which, which one? All of them. Uh, DDC management for one. And then number two is, who's number two? Uh, structure point. Structure point, and then number three is the name. No, 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 no. Do I have anyone yet? Do you have all of that information you can give me? Um, it's floating around. You can public retro re re records request it, or you can get it from some someone has a copy back there. I'm sure. All right. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yeah. Hi. Good evening. My name is Pat Ambusky. Uh, 8580 Heilman Drive, Bethel Township, Miami County. Just a couple of questions. Uh, the city manager indicated that the, during his report that uh, he met with uh, Miami County. I would assume that's at Miami County, not Bethel Township. I met the, we met with the Bethel Township Administrator. Okay, thank you, sir. Sure. And uh, you indicated that uh, it was a go, I think was your, was your word for, what does that mean? Uh, means that he was taking it back to his commissioners to determine what their what their I'm sorry their trustees if they wanted to keep it in the township or release it to the city. Okay, so that a, a go means that <laughs> Miami County Bethel Township has has not yet a agreed. Go means, a go means we're both moving forward in the processes. Moving forward, but not not necessarily agreed on annexation. I, yeah, there's nothing been submitted. Even to even though I know their the hands would be tied if it got to that got to that point. Uh, second question would be, is there any, I'm a, I'm a neophyte with the annexation process, um, although we've suffered through it with, uh, with the city of Huber Heights on the south side, of the south side of the township, but is there anything in the annexation process that has to go before the people of New Carlisle for vote? No. no. Nope. So it's all, it's all in, you, in your hands. Mm -hmm. All I can ask is that you listen and pay attention to some of the folks that have talked before. Uh, about trying to preserve uh, a little bit of our way of life. The, the, the density would be, uh, you know, if we have to compromise, I would, I would hope that you, you all would, uh, would have a little leverage with the developer to uh, take a look at the density situation and try to uh, adjust that. Uh, if anybody's been through uh, carriage trail development here recently and look at some of the new housing that's going up there in similar kind of density, uh, you'd be able to see that, that folks can, literally, they can open up their bedroom windows and shake hands between the houses. They're that close. That's, in my opinion, nuts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You want us? Ben? Hello. Hello. Anita Bailey. I'm at 504 Finview Drive. Uh, which is in New Carlisle. I lived for 40 something years in Bethel Township in Miami County. Um, had two children go through uh, K through 12 and now I have five grandchildren going through that school system as well. Um, very well acquainted with the development of carriage trails and what an impact that has been. Uh, you can barely push a lawnmower between those homes they are not $250,000 homes. They're like $450,000 homes. And they are continuing to push and to build for that. Uh, they go for most of their services to Huber Heights. So it's also kind of a blended area, uh, such as what we have in our area. Um, I don't see that there are support services for a large volume of new homes to be built. Uh, I live in one of the retirement homes in Clark Farms. You know, so I have kind of a defined area. We are fairly close together. Uh, it's a lot more dense 
than what I was previously living in. Um, and all of that is manageable. You know, you make that choice. But having that many homes in that small of an area, which I can see two of those developments from my front door. Uh, so it would very much impact um, my quality of life as well as other people in that area. Um, and as many have said, I'm in favor of, of some development, but I think there has to be some kind of social structure. There has to be environmental structure. Uh, there needs to be other businesses. I mean, there's in New Carlisle, there's what, two gas stations and two restaurants or something like that. You just don't have enough going on here to support those kinds of things. The school system in Bethel, I know a lot about. And so it's going to be, I mean, they're struggling to get built what they're trying to get built now to accommodate all of the kids that came from carriage trails, as well as the new homes that have been built in uh, Bethel local schools area. Um, trying to add 275 homes or whatever it is in this area would absolutely be a disaster. And it probably would be a disaster for Tecumseh as well. I know that's a smaller school system, you know, that you really struggle to have enough money to provide this and that for the kids. Uh, so I don't, I don't see it as an advantage if they would build homes, you know, on more of a bigger division, you know, where the homes had maybe three acres or something like that. They would be more desirable. Uh, they would have a lot of value, but they wouldn't be like put together like pancakes in a stack. Uh, you just have no quality of life when you have homes that are built on top of each other. Each of those homes has two cars and probably two others. So you have uh, your environmental issues uh, as far as pollution is concerned and, and for a place to even park them. Um, so I, I just wanted to state that because I do have experience from both areas living in New Carlisle now and having lived in Miami County with Bethel Local Schools for a, a number of years. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, anyone else? Ms. Hoffman. Yes. Terry Hoffman, 316 South Scott Street. Change of topic for you guys. We have a speeding problem in this town. As someone who walks all over town and in nice weather bikes all over town, I know this for a fact. When the deputies are not visible at What a Dog, people speed going in and out of town. On all of the streets that are not broken up by stop signs or traffic lights, Church, Clay, Jefferson, Lake, Smith, and even Zimmerman, there's a lot of speeding going on. I see it when I walk. And over the last 20 years or so, I've heard various council members mention, well, we don't want to get a reputation of a speed trap like Northampton. Well, people in Clark and surrounding counties that know Northampton's reputation don't speed in Northampton. It's working for them. And I really think that the safety of the pedestrians and the motoring public should take precedence over worrying about being labeled a speed trap. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> You said the new pro I can attest to our office is doing a very good job at that, though. I, uh, I got to <laughs> 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 I may or may not have gotten pulled over by our You were the first one I thought of when she started talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fault, but they do a very good job with what they're doing. It definitely is a little bit. All right, anyone else? And we appreciate your donation to our fines and fortunes. <laughs> 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 <Keep on donating. laughs> oh, that was nice. Thank you for the laugh. What do you got, Matt? Can I just have 30 seconds of time? 30 seconds. I'm sorry. <clears throat> just, just for clarity. And I know a question was asked about rezoning. <coughs> Does anyone in the city of New Carlisle have any after annexation has occurred, any recourse of action to petition 
the government, the local, local the decision, the decision to force it to the ballot to allow their development to occur or not. I don't believe so. So that has to be done at the county level before annexation occurs. Right. <clears throat> and, that's a, and that's what we stressed at the last meeting, you know, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with anybody coming here and having a, having a word. But, you know, if you want to stop it, get, get to them before it gets to us. What about the portion of RD3 that's already within city limits? Doesn't have to be annexed. Doesn't have to be annexed. And let, here, here, but can, here. Can, can, the, can the electorate of New Carlisle petition the government to stop the rezoning? After they pass the ordinance, they have 15, it's 15 days to be effective. You guys can do whatever you want in those 15 days. So it's going to take time. So if they vote yes, the, the residents of New Carlisle can petition and say, put it to a ballot, and they can say no. No, they can't ballot. They can just petition that. But I am no attorney. But there's, that's why it takes 15 days for ordinances to become effective, unless okay. it's an emergency, and then it's not up for referendum. Okay. So if we do the annexation as far as an emergency ordinance, we get six councils to vote on it. It cannot go. It cannot be. It cannot be back to the public for them to take their. Okay. Again. However, if it's normal ordinance, if it's normal ordinance, they have, it's 15 days to become effective. Okay. Again, my whole thing is for development, make the developer pay their fair share to the schools. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right. Moving on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Resolution. Uh, committee reports from the Charter Review, we, uh, Parks and Rec. If any, was there anyone that had you didn't have anything, did you? No, I'll bring it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Moving on to resolutions. Ms. Burner. She didn't have it. Resolution 2022-05. No. A resolution amending resolution 2021-15R, the capital improvement program for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the purpose of adding capital purchases. Mm. Council. Anyone? Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> no one's making a What's going on? You make a motion? Nobody likes your resolution. Oh, no, no. I got a motion from Mr. Cook. Oh. Second. Okay. Second. Right. I, I, I was like, I was, I was kind of lost here. I'm like, what? Did I make I was trying to find it first. What happened? All right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no, Mr. Cook and who? Mr. Roadwall. Thank you. Uh, an explanation of this resolution is just uh, cleaning up our capital improvement plan. We uh, had some things we needed to add to that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments, Council? Ms. Burner, when you're ready. All righty. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwell. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Moving on to our ordinances, we have ordinance 2022-09, an ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-44. And for council gets on this, I would like the motion to amend it, uh, approve it as amended. Um, we had some discrepancies between what was listed in the CIP and what I put on here. So basically the number that matches this, this 19,950 matches the CIP that you guys just approved. So basically, the motion would be motion to approve as amended. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move to approve uh, ordinance 2022-09 as amended. Second. Second by Mr. Vaughn. Hey, an explanation of this ordinance. Um, anytime that we uh, change our appropriations, we have to put that back in front of council. So this is definitely a housekeeping item. Any, any questions, council? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right. Councilman Lindsay. Stop. Nope. Yes. No, start with Cook. You were the second, right? That was the motion. Oh, was I first. mixed it up. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on a minute. No, Bond was the second. Yes. Yeah, he was okay. the first. Councilman Cook. Sorry, yeah. I was real on the wrong line. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. That passes 6-0. She's going to roll now. 
I looked at the wrong. She's going to hit your house. It's a mess over here. All right, we are on ordinance 2022-10. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to submit consent to the Ohio Department of Transportation for a resurfacing project located within city within city of New Carlisle. Council, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, go ahead. Uh, move, move to uh, approve. Second. Second by Mr. Robel. <clears throat> <clears throat> and an explanation of this ordinance, this is uh, for allow me to enter to agreement. Uh, it looks like for some uh, resurfacing project and on state route 235. Calculated discussion. Is this the entire length through town? Uh, it is Dayton Lake Road to Main Street. <coughs> so Dayton Lake and the Main Street. Once you're in the city limits at either end, it's Main Street. Excuse me? What? Dayton Lakeview Road, once you get into the city limits at either end, it's Main Street. It says, move forward, we serve the city of New Carlisle, including Dayton Lakeview Road from log point 3.949 to 3.971 and Main Street 3.9 to 5.09. So basically this is a section of 235 that goes through town. I would assume it's for the entire length of what goes through the town. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cool. Anyone else? In two miles. Are you ready? Good. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogold? Yes. And that passes 6 to 0. Ordinance 2022 11. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a newer vehicle for the Director of Public Service. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Robo. An explanation of this ordinance, this is to uh, expend over $20,000, which is my monetary uh, limit to spend, to replace uh, Mr. Kiko's uh, Jeep Cherokee. We should have a celebration. The thing's old. It's, give me it's something Cadillac like converted. Yes. It's already been stolen. That's old. I think we should give him something older. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Bridge, where's this money coming from? Uh, it's uh, it's it, money that's uh, incorporated in our general fund. It's really money yeah. left over from the Madison. Oh, I, know. I got it. I got it. I, I heard what you said. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Burner, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rogel? Yes. That passes 6 0. We have Ordinance 2022 12. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the demolition of a non operational secondary clarifier and the installation of a new secondary clarifier for the wastewater treatment plant and declaring an emergency. <coughs> Council. So moved. Mr. Cook. Second. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Give me one second. That was Mr. Grimm. Uh, yes, yeah, Cook you. Grimm. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is an emergency ordinance. We don't like doing these, but given the state of this particular clarifier, we do have to move quick to get it fixed um, because it is an emergency and we don't have to put it out to bid, uh, which flagged this to be an emergency ordinance. So we do need all six to vote for this uh, tonight. This is uh, in our budget and our repair maintenance. You need what? All six? I do need all six. Oh, let me think about this. <laughs> this is for the waste plant that we. <clears throat> Haven't put any money into in 20 years. We've done vast majority improvements at wastewater plant the past few years. Just want to emphasize that. Probably should. Yep. Yep. I think a lot of wrong I information. I think around. we can handle our current capacity. Right. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? When you're ready, please. Right. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Oh, let me think about it for a while. Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 16. All right, thank you very much. Other business, open to any other city uh, 
Discussion with council, any comments, feedback, all the above? Lots of comments. I just wanted to throw one out. I forget which uh, which one of our guests mentioned it. Talk it kind of off the subject of the development, but kind of in relation. Somebody mentioned the alcohol sales, which I would love to see come into New Carlisle. Um, I've touched on that a few times over the years. It, it needs to happen. I would love to have a nice restaurant. Um, we looked, me and Mr. Roadwald actually looked into it a little bit. Uh, what, it, what needs to happen, it's not us that makes it happen. So, uh, you know, John Smith wants to open up a new restaurant in New Carlisle, uh, whether it's on Main Street or down by IGA, that, that would fall on that business owner. So what they would have to do, for example, say Penny Wayne wanted to serve wine. They would have to go uh, get uh, signatures from X amount of people who voted, uh, get the signatures to get it put on the ballot for that zone in the city of New Palau to serve on site and then it go to the voters. Um, I would love to see, you know, I'd love to see one of our local businesses, you know, work on that. That would be great. But just a little piece of information that that wouldn't be up to us. So if anybody's wanting to start a business, it would be a great idea. I think uh, you guys would have a lot of support. I know we've had a lot of people on, on social media say that they would love to have a nice, you know, sit down restaurant where they could get, you know, just like 571 or uh, there was, uh, you know, some places in town that would that would be great for a similar uh, similar uh, atmosphere as Penny Lane that serves wine and, you know, just that, that's what this town needs. It's 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 long overdue, so. But it's something the council can't do. Yeah, but it's something we, we can't do. It would have to be the business owner or a new business owner that wanted to do it. He did, he did I don't think out. small engine repair well, serves. Work. Long yeah. horn, a bottle of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick, Connor, then we're going to wrap it up. So there's no way for just a general. No, it's not. And that's what I thought because that was one of the first things I would have loved to have went after. But no, unfortunately, it's not up to us. Yeah. It's to the voters and whoever wants to take the time and effort to put it on the ballot. So if you know somebody, pass that around, please. Uh, I've got the information on, on how that procedure would go if anybody would be interested. In and so. if that person needs help, they can reach out to the Better Business Bureau of Clark County um, Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get your email or something. I'll shoot it to you. Josh doesn't need a drink anymore. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Council? No. no. All right. No, sir. You. This email from Mike George that we all received about huh? vehicle noise ordinance, vehicle oh, noise level. Yeah. Oh. Ordinance 648.09. Yeah. It says noise levels should be within guidelines by the code of recommendations by the, I lost it. National Standards Institute or its successor um, and the, the clerk, oh, here it is. The code of recommended practices of the Society of Automotive Engineers. The clerk shall have copies of such code available. Does the clerk have those documents? No, what do you, what do you, what, what? No. Yeah, right. I didn't receive an email either. Yeah. No. But what's going on? It's over on Applewood. Oh, uh, just one said it. One person. The one yeah. gentleman. My recommendation to council is not do absolutely nothing with that until more one people actually complain because this particular resident is a is a hard to deal with. Well, I've had careful, careful. Had very much other, hard to deal with. Numerous other other complaints over the over time. You're from the same guy, huh? From the same resident. No. <coughs> Numerous residents. Uh, about same area. Vehicle noise all over, mainly on Main Street. Yeah, around 117 with me. Hmm? I mean, Main Street's going to be loud. You got semi trucks coming down it. I mean, that's 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 loud. It's a state route. Semi trucks are not light motor vehicles. Okay. And what is what are the light motor vehicles doing? Mm. Noisy. <laughs> Uh, the, the ordinance, it sets forth certain levels, mm -hmm. and it says it should be measured by a uh, noise test meter. We probably don't have those either, do we? Yeah, we do. We do? Mm -hmm. Do the deputies have them? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do they investigate these complaints? Not really, because it's not I've, not, I've not had a noise complaint from other people on Main Street, never. Council, is this the first one you've got? I've, I've not gotten any. The, uh, yeah, I, I don't. 
I, I know before, a few years ago, we had complaints. And uh, that was that's when we got the, the, yeah, the noise, the tester, and put it in the cruisers. Uh, this is the only complaint that I've had this year so far. I mean, I haven't had any others. Okay. Good. Good. Here's what else. All right. Mr. Mayor, motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Lowell, second by Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lamari? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lynch? Yes. Yeah. Six zero. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice